the most powerful motivational speeches that I have ever heard came from people who told me I couldn't do something. You know why? Because when they told me I couldn't do it, I was bound and determined to show them that I could. Tell me I can't do it. I will prove you wrong. I will show you. We are not made to survive. We're not made to manage our pain or get through it. We're made to be creators of our lives. We can create anything. Anything we can dream about, we can create. How much of life do you feel like you control? Or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? It's very easy to have those events start to take control unless we take control of what's between our ears, our own mind. You see, what you and I focus on massively affects how we feel, whether we're thriving or surviving. If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. Focus equals power. If you want to thrive, you got to focus on what you can control. you got to focus on the difference you can make. you got to focus on what's already in your life that you're grateful for. Most people allow their fear of failure, 80%, allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. When you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. Set some higher goals, reach for some higher purpose. Go for something beyond what you thought you could do. You've got to believe that tomorrow can be better than today. But here's the big one, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Ask for wisdom to deal with the challenges of today and tomorrow. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Wish you were better. People who manipulate and play on your emotions. They get you to sympathize with them. They get you to feel sorry for them. They get you to, oh my God, are you, oh, I can't believe you're going through this. This is not about being heartless. I need you to try your best to emotionally protect yourself from a specific characteristic. And let me explain it. This is a person who continues to date abusive and dysfunctional men. This is a person who continues to jump in and out of relationships with bad, horrible, and abusive people, and they continue to run to you with all of their problems as if they had nothing to do with the person that they're in a relationship with. That's a characteristic. You sign yourself up to be abused, whether it's mentally, spiritually, emotionally, or physically, not saying that it's okay, not saying that you're not supposed to have people's back, but if you notice that there's a pattern of someone who always does this thing called there's dysfunction, there's issues, there's problems, there's trauma, there's abuse. You know what? Let me walk in that direction. And then you are always the one to get the phone call when all of this shit starts getting crazy and they want you to help them out. I want the world to be better because I was here. I want my life, I want my, my work, uh, my, my family, I want it to mean something. And it's like, it has, if, if you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. There's no way that you can say that you are really concerned about your career getting to another level if you still have those managers, agents, lawyers, business people, or anything associated to your business. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. There's a certain delusional 
quality that all successful people have to have. You have to believe that something different can happen. Confucius said, uh, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. I, I realized that when, to, to have the level of success that I, I want to have, it's difficult to spread it out and do multiple things. It takes such a desperate, obsessive focus. You really got to focus with all of your fiber and all of your heart and all of your creativity. You better have on you this sense of urgency like you ain't got forever. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I've said it to you before. I will keep saying it until the day I die. Listen to me. You have to take advantage of an opportunity of a lifetime and the lifetime of the opportunity. What am I telling you? I'm telling you there must be a sense of urgency. That you got that what separates the boys from the men, the, the women from the girls is how they utilize their time. It is a sense of urgency and every single day when you wake up, you better be spending time on your dreams. You better be spending time on you. You ain't got time to waste. It is a sense of urgency. I want you when you wake up to have that spear. Are you hearing me now? Some of y'all walking slow. Some of y'all, your energy is low. Some of y'all, your, your passion and y'all drive is low. You better have a sense of urgency because when you have a sense of urgency, what you're telling this world is not only do I want it, I want it as bad as I want to breathe and I want it right now, but it's easier to watch greatness. It's easier to go see greatness than it is to put in the time, to put in the energy, to, to discipline yourself, to sacrifice. It's easier. And so that's why you average and so you frustrated because you're not living like you should live no you don't have what you should have you're not being who you should be and so that's why you don't want to wake up in the morning that's why you pissed off with Monday because Monday is the day that you're supposed to go mold and shape and create your greatness that's why you like Friday I get it because Friday you get to chill you don't have to face yourself on Friday you don't have to face yourself on Saturday or on Sunday that's the day that everybody is partying everybody's drunk everybody gets to forget that they didn't become who they were supposed to come during the week. That's why I get it now, but I challenge you. Listen to me, I challenge you. Why do I challenge? Because I know you can't. I know, listen to me, some of you, you're not even in the game. Can you do me a favor? Get in the game. You could be great if you just showed up. Get in the game. And if you think the person you are right now is going to get you to this level, you've lost your mind. But if you're willing to get cut, if you're willing to get constructive criticism, if you're willing to go through professional development, if you're willing to get an accountability partner, if you're willing to grow and learn more tomorrow than you knew today, then you can get to the next level. But this version is not going to take you to that level. And that's what I had to realize. Eric, you can't be getting up at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning and think you're going to be on his level. You're going to have to get up a little early. You cannot not read books. You can't watch every show that comes out, every football game, every basketball game. You cannot do it and be successful, son. But if you're willing to make some changes, you want to shine like a diamond, you got to get cut like a diamond. How to get motivated, how to stay motivated. Discipline and intent. It's that simple. Clarity of intent means any time that you have a nice alignment in your thoughts, words, and actions. and actions. There are certain things that I do on a regular basis. Even if I don't particularly feel like doing them, I am disciplined to an extent that I do them regardless. Like your foot is on the gas and not on the brake. If you want to get to true greatness, you need to find a real reason, a real drive inside yourself, a real cause, a real purpose. Intent means desire. So think about that word for a second. Desire. You want to have clearly defined goals. It's very important that you actually know what it is you aspire to and you know the why. A real reason. Something that truly motivates you and truly inspires you. Without that, you're not going to have that same level of spark where you're going to think about it or work on it when you don't have to or above and beyond. It's not going to be forefront of your mind. I personally think of a wild tiger looking at a delicious gazelle off in the distance and how that tiger is immediately and intrinsically motivated on a deep, core, and fundamental level to get it. While you have your foot down on the gas, 
What you also have is the break going on. If you're clearing your intent, you're not thinking of all the bad things that could go wrong. So as long as you're in a promotion-oriented mindset, you're going to tend to do well, right? Now, you're seeing the upside to doing it, and your foot is hard on the gas, not on the brake. True greatness, true mastery doesn't come from a little spurt of effort here or there. It comes from being truly dedicated and focused all the time to the point that every little thing you see, you're relating to your field or you're finding a way to come up with creative ways to improve. And that's intent. You feel it in your bone. Nothing on this planet is going to stop me. If you look at the people that are most successful in sports, there are a few that will come from rich backgrounds. But a vast majority of the people who excel athletically actually come from very poor backgrounds. But the thing is, that game or that sport is all they have. If you look at basketball, look at boxing, look at soccer, and that's because they don't have any other options. Of course, they're going to dedicate everything to it, and it's going to be their dream, it's going to be their passion, it's going to be the only thing they're focused on in their entire life. And that single-minded focus is what it takes to get great. So it's like this. Discipline is the vehicle for your success, and intent is the fuel. One will not work without the other. It's this constant process of working so hard, focusing, but without any reward forthcoming, without any immediate feedback. And that's when it's the hardest, right? When you're getting positive feedback, it's really easy to stay motivated. If you want to apply, getting a nice clarity in your intent, the best way that I know is to just start getting momentum with whatever you're doing. So you want to be constantly challenging yourself to be striving, to be doing something new, to be doing something that pushes yourself. You want to put yourself through that failure because it's the most real feedback you're going to get. Over time, as you build momentum with it, you'll find that that intent starts to dominate the forefront of your mind and the other parts of your mind, the prevention parts, just sort of fall away. Bruce Lee once said, be like water. Water has no shape. There's no form without a container. But when it's focused, it can erode mountains and blast through solid rock. But without these two crucial components, you're stuck on square one. Discipline and intent. They're like nitro and glycerin. Harmless by themselves. We'll mix them together, and they're explosive.